Check Yourself is uh, an Ice Cube song. It's a cover song. Um, it's on an Ice Cube record called Bootlegs and B-Sides, which is great. And uh, it's actually, I think, a remix from a, like a Grandmaster Flash song. That riff, you know, that everybody seems to know. And uh, I'd been doing a series of gigs at 55 Bar doing cover tunes. We did an Ice Cube night with um, James Jean. Hi, I'm James. Uh -huh. I play bass. And Keith Carlock. And that song was just kind of fun to play because everybody knew it, you know, went from one place or another. And, and I overheard somebody in the audience saying, wow, I hope they record that. And I thought that was a really good idea. And so uh, it's the one song that's made pretty much like I used, I have been making records for a while now, which is just taking trio and cutting the thing live with minimal, minimal composition and, um, and just seeing kind of where it goes. And, uh, and it's, so it's the kind of connecting piece between this album and, and what came before it, and I'm really happy to have it on there. Highway 61 is based on the Bob Dylan song, Highway 61. Um, the title just popped into my head and it seemed kind of funny and I wondered what, what a song called that would be about and kind of came up with the idea for this, this character. Um, which normally I don't do is think about character studies or anything, but it just seemed to kind of fit with this one. And, and I wrote some different angles about it and then realized there were way too many words for me to sing and, and thought, maybe it's a rap song, you know? And I asked uh, Owen Biddle, the bass player in the session, whether he thought the guy in the roots would be willing to do it. And he said, hmm, no. And <laughs> so I did it myself. And, um, and it's, you know, basically just this kind of, sort of funny, cool guy, you know. Uh, maybe somebody I'd want to be like, I don't know, when I'm older. I'd like to thank my body as was some words, uh, you know. Those of us that are lucky enough to have bodies that basically do, you know, everything they're supposed to do, uh, it's a miracle, essentially. and. And, and I just, you know, thought it would be a nice gesture to thank the body for it, you know, for housing me, housing us, you know. And um, I know a lot of people aren't lucky enough to have everything working and, you know, uh, that's it. Just a positive song about that. Can't Stand to Rock is, um, you know, just kind of a joke, really, the title, you know, just a funny title, and then, again, I tried to figure out, you know, what it would be about, and I guess a lot of these songs start with titles, you know, um, and I just imagine somebody that, that, you know, didn't want to play rock or do anything, really, bec you know, because because other people have done it so well before him, you know. And then he goes on to describe what he wants from the music, and it's all what you can get from the best rock, you know, or the best any music, really. So it's just kind of a funny thing, you know, and the song rocks, so it's I Can't Stand a Rock, and it's a rock song. Go figure. Bells was a, a song that I wrote that was based or some kind of reaction to an E.E. E. Cummings poem, of all things. I was reading a book of a collection of his stuff and loving it, by the way. And, um, and I, there was this one song, I don't even think it had a title, it was just kind of numbered or part of a series, and the, the text had these cascading bells, you know, in it. And so I wrote, I, I used, essentially it was the form of it that I tried to to use to create a piece of music uh, with. And, and I also used the text to kind of, you know, I tried to reflect what the text was talking about in terms of what the, the music actually was. Uh, and it took a long time to figure out how to do the song um, because I didn't want to repeat the form or anything. I wanted it to just unfold straight through, kind of through compose like the poem was. And, uh, but it wasn't really that long, and so I had the idea of breaking it up and 
And using this, you know, my wife, for the first time she heard me using the Mooger Fuga ring modulator, she, she always, she started calling it the bells. Like, are you going to bring the bells to the gig, you know? Because it has that, it can do that. It does that. And, um, and so I thought to use those as these kind of, you know, interludes in between the phrases of the music. And I really like how it came out. To the sun. Son of a Scientist is kind of a slightly older thing. I've had that around for a little while. Was never really sure how to how to do it, and I think the words and the music kind of came more or less together on that one. Um, not you know not many words, but the the idea is just it's this person who's the son of a scientist who needs everything kind of proven to him. You know, the just daily human things that we encounter. He he needs confirmation. He needs you know proof. The Bad Guys uh, was just an idea, really, you know, this, this idea of, uh, of, you know, that I'd written in words uh, initially, um, of just, you know, the, the whole, you know, people are always talking about the bad guys and, and who are they and, you know, we're bad to them and they're bad to us and we kill them because they kill us and it just, you know, on, on a very superficial level, it just it seems so ludicrous, the concept of it. And, and so the song is just that. It's just uh, that one idea, and then the music just was inevitable from that. You know? Sometimes that happens. I mean, I normally start with words and then add music, and sometimes it's just it's, there's no question about what the music is going to be um, from the words, and, and that was the case with that song. How the West Was Left, which might be the title of the record, actually, I'm not sure. Um, but that's a song that I actually wrote initially for the, the Abstract Logics Music Festival that happened last year. And I went down with Anthony Jackson and Cliff Almond, and uh, I'd written that's the music for that song, and we tried to do it there, and it didn't, you know, for various reasons, it didn't really come off that great, which is why it's not on the record that was, uh, that released, that was released from that festival. But... Um, but I really liked the music, and, and it was very kind of evocative to me. And I needed to write words to it, and um, and I find that very difficult. I find it very difficult to write words after music has been written. And uh, I don't know whether it's expectation or what, but uh, it took a long time. It took some months to just come up with that handful of words that kind of had this sort of nostalgic quality, which I know some people don't like, but I really do. Um, and, you know, there, it's not really autobiographical, although I did, in fact, leave the West when I was pretty young. But, um, but there are some images in it for, that I, you know, robbed my past for. And um, that one I cut in London. It was really fun. I went over for two days and hung and played with those guys, and they were so great. And, and uh, the song really got the vibe. Strip It was uh, just a riff that I came up with, with the words. They came at the same time, and it was just this kind of silly, you know, affirmation of life, basically. And it always seemed to kind of have this, uh, this kind of talking heads quality to it, you know, this kind of, you strip it, you know, kind of silliness. Um, but, um, and the, you know, the it's... I stand by the message, you know, it's just, it's ridiculous, but you strip it, you have a good dance, you skip it, you stop making chance. I know it's idiotic, but basically it's true. I'm afraid that I'm dead. I'm afraid that I'm dead. Those are some words that I had um, from a while ago, actually, and, and I ran across them and they seemed, you know, I mean, I've felt like that, I, I assume other people have too. But, uh, you know, fortunately, I don't feel like that right now, but I have. And, um, and I, they almost seemed a little too strong to use uh, on a record, but, but I thought to anyway. And then I, I, um, I didn't want to write it on guitar for some reason. I can't really remember why, so I wrote it on piano. And, and then right at the time that I was, I was doing that, I'd run across this guy, Yasushi Miura, uh, on internet radio and just flipped, you know, and 
and I'd written him to ask him where to find his stuff because I couldn't find it anywhere and he was nice enough to send me a bunch of stuff and and then it, I just realized wow you know it would be great to have him on this track and he agreed and so I sent it off to Tokyo and he did it and it's just you know it's fantastic this zombie dream that he made and um, you know powerful beautiful I'm actually very excited about this record because it's it's another step in a direction that I've been making since I've made Long To Be Loose, really. Long To Be Loose was an instrumental version of this record. <laughs> it's, it's, I've been trying to figure out how to get words into my music for the longest time and it took so much trial and error just to get to the point where I could use just a few words on a song and, and have it feel you know, integrated with the music. And, um, and I'm, I'm super excited because I'm kind of cracking it, you know, and this record is not the, you know, completion of that journey at all, but it is a step in the, in the direction that's been in my head now for a really long time. So I'm pretty happy.